It's been a long road, it's a long way to go. So many days gone and the pain strong. Don't know if I can last long. I'm just tired of holding on. Why am I holding on? You see, nobody is perfect in this world. We all face a bumpy road some point in our life and we all have a story to tell. Welcome to Walk a Mile in My Shoes, episode two, A Road to Recovery. I'm about to meet an ex-drug dealer and I want to find out if he has the right answers for my questions. So why did you actually start to sell the drugs at the start? Well, I started selling drugs because I was in a position where I didn't have any money around me. Like, I wasn't getting support with my parents and I had friends around me already who were already selling drugs and I knew how to go about selling drugs. Now, I'm pretty sure that you've been in a position or even the current was in a position that you didn't want to do. Look, I have done things in the past that I'm not proud of and I'm sure the people who are watching have done things in the past that they're not proud of. But I'm just trying to get a different perspective on obviously the experience that you've had in the drug game. How do you feel about the growing epidemic of the drug culture today? Well, in today's, in today's society, there's definitely a growing drug epidemic because like, if you look at the people, the charts and the celebrities, they're all talking about stabbings and selling drugs. Like the yeah. kids who are watching this look up to these people. So they see it's like, if I start to sell drugs and that, I can also be in that position and find it cool. Do you feel like we are, as you said, do you feel like we're getting people are getting radicalised into the drugs? Well, in a way, yes, I do feel that because if you're looking up to someone who's selling drugs, then you're more likely to do it and yeah, and you're more likely to sell the drugs, but if you look up to the, pe the person who sells the drug. So why, what I'm going to ask you now, so why did you actually stop selling the drugs? For me personally, Several things happened, like one I went to prison, you know, and I had to do, well, I don't how know long, How long did you go to prison for? Well, I had to do around two years, okay. you know, I came out, I was still selling, like bad stuff just kept happening to me, I had a growing effect on my relationship, my family, and I just had to get out and find another way. How did you feel when you were selling the drugs? How did you feel like in your heart that there's people out there stealing from their own children, stealing from the mums, the dads? and that money will come all the way into your pocket. Did you feel any remorse? To be honest, at the time, I had a slight remorse, but at the same time, like, either, I always looked at it, either, they're going to get it either way, whether they get it from me or someone else, they're going to get it either way. So, yeah, I've got more remorse today than I did then. So, for someone who's thinking about selling drugs, who are selling the drugs, what advice, if they're watching through this camera right now, what advice have you got to that person? from your experience? Well, me personally, I would, I would say, like, you can sell the drugs, you will benefit in the short-term gains, you buy the things that you want to buy, you may feel good about yourself, you may, ha may have the things that you want to have, but trust me, in the long term and that, you will suffer. I know it sounds cliche, but you always end up dead or in prison. You're going to suffer one way or another. So, I strongly advise you to think carefully about selling it because, it's a dark path, man, that is not, been, not often spoken about. We have been. Thank you for your time, man. After our conversation, we were introduced to an associate who makes money from clients inside the prison. I've always thought, how did the drugs actually get into the jail? So I'm about to go meet someone now who I've been put in contact with and he's going to show me what an actual throwover 
is and how it works. So let's go. I'm at the spot where a 10 ton hydraulic press is used to compact the drugs into a small shotgun shell sized parcel ready to throw over the prison wall. So this is, uh, so what you're doing now, so you're gonna, you said you're gonna make the, the parcel, you said? Yeah, yeah, basically, we've got, uh, we've got an order in it for four ounces of board, half an ounce of coke, so it's got to press it. So you're gonna, nice pre you're gonna press this and send it straight to the jail, throw it over at the wall? Straight over, make sure I take it down, just throw it straight Have in. you ever, you ever got caught doing this or anything? No, it's in the sticky one, it's, it's, it's come close, but you know that, that is. Mm, it's a risk you are taking it. It's gone close though, real close. How do you feel about you know people in the jail relying on this parcel to make the money? Because obviously, obviously you're probably friends with the people inside or something, so they're kind of relying on you on the outside of the wall. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm in this business, and I've got to make sure things are done from my side. So everything got to be done on their side as well. How do you feel about you know people taking the drugs and you're making financial gains from people who are addicted to the drugs? I know it's not a perfect world, but how do you feel that as a person? Just one moment. As a person, I don't go out chasing them. They've got me. They've got my. They've got my number. They know how to contact me. They make their holes with me. Do you get it? I'm only doing what I do daily. People phone me. I don't phone them. So if you're phoning me for something, you're gonna get me. Ask me for it. If they don't phone me, who else is gonna phone? Now the next stop is the jail, where prisoners are communicating with people on the outside to make the mission a success. You know, listen, I just got the call now. They're not going to come out on social media. You know, I've got to go down to the spot. I'm going to throw it over where I usually do. So, you got someone there waiting there now? Yeah, someone's going to be out in the yard in it, obviously. Pick it up. So they should be down his travel. He's going to plug it in it. So you're like up his ass or something? Yeah, up his ass, wherever he's got to go. But yeah, so I'm literally going to wait here now. He's just going to do the throw over. He's going to come back and he's going to let me know how it goes. If it goes successful, there's a lot of people in the jail who are going to get the drugs what they want and people are going to make money. So we'll see. Yeah, I was waiting at the spot for him to come back from the throw over and he didn't come back. I was there for about half an hour and he still didn't come back. So. I'm going to give him a call now and uh, see how we got on with it. Yeah. Hello, it's Cole. I'm just saying um, you didn't come back to the spot, I was just saying how you got on. Oh, it, oh, success for the guy. Yeah, yeah, I'm a video to send it through to you later. Yeah, if you said, yeah, send a video for that and yeah, we can use that. But yeah, man, uh, alright then. Alright, alright, listen, you're, uh, I'm gonna have to go, yeah. Uh, listen, good luck with that documentary, you won't come on in the season, take care of yourself, right? Yeah, man, alright, appreciate it, nice one, thanks. Say that. Right. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so he just said that success, he just said that he went over and uh, he's gonna send a video across, so. Let's see how it goes. This prisoner is feeling the effects of synthetic cannabinoids, also known as mamba or spice. Yes, pit boy. Yo, man, doing a skank. Come here, let me get right close to you. You all right? Yo, you got crossed your lip, fam. People do this.